Neil Entwistle was from Worksop in the United Kingdom. He had a father that was a miner and a mum that was a dinner nanny. For those who aren't from England, I'll explain that a dinner nanny is a chef or a cook that works at lunchtime in schools. So he came from humble beginnings. But he, were, he studied well, he was very clever, he went on, a, he excelled at school and then went on to York Uni where he met Rachel Sousa. She was from America, uh, they fell head over heels in love and Neil felt that there was no future for him here in the United Kingdom so he went to America with Rachel and they set up life there. They were married and had a lovely little girl called Lillian Rose. However, Rachel and Lillian Rose were found dead on the 22nd of January 2016. Lillian Rose had a bullet hole through her little body that had gone through a torso and into her mum. And Rachel was shot in the head. They didn't find Rachel and Lillian on the first search because the blanket or comforter was pulled up over them. However, on the second search of the house, after having been alerted by relatives who were concerned, um, they were alerted by an, a smell and found the bodies. So a few hours after his wife and child were dead, Neil left the country uh, from Logan Airport he can be seen on CCTV footage trying to get together enough cash to get the ticket to fly back to London Heathrow and then proceeded to scootle. Scootle's a good word, I should use scootle more. Scootle back to his parents' house in Worksop. So while he was away, um, a state trooper called Neil at home with his parents and felt that he was going to be doing a condolence call that he was going to be telling them you know um i'm sorry your wife and daughter have passed away but neil confirmed that he knew they were deceased and said that he had he didn't know what to do he hadn't called 911 he hadn't called anybody else that he thought about killing himself and went home because that was the only place that was familiar to him. I mean, I think my parents are keeping the eye on me, but I, I, I haven't, I, I haven't even cried yet. You haven't even cried? No, not properly. No? No. But what would, what would properly be? Usually, my experience is not really a proper way in a situation like oh. this, things just happen. Yeah, I mean, that's, that, that is what he did. No, I, I shed a, a few tears, my Rachel at Christmas sent over. Um, we did little presents from Lillian, we sent over these little crystals that people could hang in there. Mm -hmm. Could hang in their windows. Um, she wrote a little note with it. And then said, you know, when you see this sparkle, think of me as it, it, it being from Lillian. And I walked in my parents' conservatory and saw it. And the start to cry, but it just, it wasn't even, it wasn't even that many tears. I don't, I don't know what I'm thinking at the moment. I just, it, I think it's almost because I'm here, it doesn't, even seem real, that's just a well, me, void. Yeah, well, let me tell you, it is real. So, with the strange behaviour, Neil had said he hadn't cried either. Oh, you. Cat. Uh, <laughs> Neil had said he hadn't cried either, so alongside the strange behaviour, and also the fact that uh, Rachel was shot with a twenty-two. And the 22 had her DNA on the muzzle and Neil's DNA on the handle. Um, and they found several internet searches in the house. 
saying things like how to kill people, etc. So there was there was sort of research on how to murder on the computer. So with that being the case, there was an international arrest warrant issued for him. Um, so and he was picked up at the Royal Oak Tube Station in London on the tube line. Um, so he was picked up there. His friend had later said that um, he'd asked him to hide him, thought it was a good idea for him to keep away from the police. Um, Rachel and Lillian were buried in a single coffin and Rachel's father, Joseph Madarazzo, had said, Neil had said that that's what he wanted and then proceeded to say, because that's how I left, I mean, found them. So while he was awaiting trial, Neil was sent to Bridgewater State Mental Health Centre for evaluation. Uh, a forensic psychiatrist, Christopher Cordas, and Dr. David Holmes concurred that Asperger's uh, could um, explain some of Neil's strange behaviour. Now, we'll cover the strange behaviour more than not crying, etc. But they say that he was quite stoic in court and didn't show any emotion. However, there is one point that's quite controversial with Neil and Twistle. During the trial, they show a clip of his wife and daughter home video and things like that or pictures and he has a strange reaction <laughs> and people are unsure if he's laughing or crying I'm gonna let you have a look and you make your own mind up So the prosecution had said that in addition to all these dodgy internet searches, Neil had was basically Googling escort agencies. He had a secret life. He was ripping off customers on eBay, setting up dodgy shell companies. He was right up to his neck in debt. He told Rachel and her family that he worked for British Intelligence and that he was going to have you know, a thousand dollars a month transferred to him, but he was actually living off credit. And he was pretty low on that credit at the time of the murders. Um, he was on Adult Friend Finder and was looking for discreet fun with other American ladies. Um, so the whole picture of this nice family man that Neil Entwistle had built up appeared not to be true behind closed doors. And that evidence was used against him in the trial, in addition to the DNA evidence that was found. The defence argued that Rachel had been depressed and had killed Lillian Rose and herself. The reason one of the jurors had said that Entwistle was ultimately found guilty was because one of the jurors was roughly Rachel's size, sort of height, proportions, etc. And they could not find a way to get the gun to go into Rachel's head at the right angle for her to kill herself, the way that the defence said that she killed herself. So he was found guilty and he was sentenced on the, he was found guilty on the 25th of June and he was sentenced to two concurrent life sentences, one for Rachel and one for Lillian. And in addition to that, he was given 10 years probation for the firearms offence for being in possession of the 22, um, with the condition that he did not profit from his story. 
So there was some argument that that's what he was doing, that he was he decided to do this so he could later sell the story and make money back. There was also an argument by the defence during appeals process that it was an illegal search of the property. But they argued back that it was inevitable discovery because there was a welfare check done more than once and they would have found that evidence anyway because they would have been in the house. Um, so there are some comparisons to be made here to between him and somebody else that we know quite well. I'll let you make those comparisons. I'm not going to lead with that. But what I will say is Neil's parents still to this day claim that he is innocent, that he could not have done this and that Rachel took the life of herself and a child. Um, and they still say that he didn't have a fair trial. I wish to make it the following statement. We know that our son Neil is now, innocent. And we are devastated to learn that the evidence points to Rachel murdering our grandchild and then committing suicide. I knew Rachel was depressed. Our son will now go to jail for loving, honouring and protecting his wife's memory. Matarazzo's spokesman, Joe Flaherty, stated, and I quote, All we need now is the right jury pool. We knew Neil would not receive a fair trial. We will continue to fight for our innocent son with the hope that one day justice will prevail. Well, still to this day, um, at the very, very latest, I think it was possibly last year or the year before, 2017, 18, his father is still talking to the British press saying that Neil is innocent. So what do you think? Do you think Neil's innocent of these crimes? I mean, even Dr. Holmes, who concurred he may have Asperger's, also said it doesn't justify the crime that he committed if he is Asperger's because he did it willingly and knowingly. So that doesn't absolve him of a crime in any way, shape or form. So anyway, I'll let you think about Neil. Have a bit of a look at the evidence online. There's plenty of it. There's the call between the state trooper and Neil Entwistle um, that's available. There's also a lot of news articles, documentaries. Um, so have a look yourself. And then we may come back to him later because I'd like to do a, a comparison with him but to be honest I don't know if I need to do that because I think it's quite obvious what this person we again as well with Entwistle we have excuses for and I'm going to make a deliberate one <laughs> for not taking his own life he tried thought about killing himself after he found them dead with a knife but he was worried that it would hurt and he wanted to kill himself with a 22 but he found that his father-in-law's house was locked and he couldn't get to it So, I'll leave that with you. Let's see what your comments are on Mr. Entwistle. And uh, we'll go from there. In the meantime, be as safe as you can be. Um, something I wanted to add before I go, hopefully you've made it this far through, is clickbaity, conjectury titles. This applies to what's Please, 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 please check the facts before you take somebody at that word. Use your noggin. There's not many people who look at this channel who are daft. Use your noggin, check the facts, have a look at the discovery for the Watts case, have a look at what can be proven. So there's proof is proof. Proof to me is a very definitive term. It means that there is absolute proof. So there's something that can't be argued against. Evidence is a suggestion that can lead to a conjecture or a speculation of what occurred. It's just a case of do check everything out for yourself. Question things um, before 
you assume that they're correct, such as NK being in witness protection. No, she's not. She might have had her name changed, they might have helped her with that, and she might have moved, but she's not in witness protection. Because if you think about it, Christopher Watts took a plea deal. So what is she a witness of? She's not. People aren't going to pay the money to relocate somebody under the under the Witness Protection Act, which is really expensive, when they don't need to. So just think about the logic behind it. Why would she be in witness protection? She's in witness protection if she's a witness. Is she a witness? Not that we know of. So just just think it too. Anyway, I think I'm probably preaching to the choir because I think most people who view my channel know better anyway. <laughs> However, um, just to make that clear, do always question things. Always take things with a pinch of salt um, and say things with your own eyes. And then, and when you have things, it's okay to speculate when you've got things to base it on. So you can speculate you know, you can say, well, this, this and this have happened. So could it be that this, this and this happened? Speculation is a great thing. A bit of imagination is wonderful. But basing a speculation on a speculation is where things are falling down a little. Um, so let's let's have a crack at uh, it being the fantastic web sleuths we are. <laughs> right, anyway. Excuse the scarf, I am ill. Um, and I did say I was feeling a bit crooked. I don't know if it had something to do with that, but bleh. Anyway, Neil Entwistle, the man who didn't cry. Or did he? Or did he laugh? You decide.